evening, you're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Wuna Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Three more people are arrested in connection with a grisly murder in Tin Shui Wai. New Omicron subvariants are found in Hong Kong as phase two of the vaccine pass scheme takes effect. And the Premier of the British Virgin Islands has been arrested on drug charges in the United States. Three more people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a woman whose body was seen being dragged on a street in Tin Shui Wai. The suspects and the victim were tenants of the same house. Isaac Lee reports. Hong Kong was horrified yesterday by footage of a man dragging a makeshift trolley, which carried the body of a woman covered by a quilt. Early morning joggers who came across the grisly scene on Tin Ha Road alerted police. A 25-year-old suspect arrested on the spot was accused of killing his 30-year-old girlfriend. But as the investigation continued, officers detained three more people early this morning. Two men and one woman, aged between 27 and 31, are alleged to have prevented the lawful burial of a body. All the suspects and the victim lived in the same village house, not far from where the body was spotted. Police believe the woman was killed in the house on Thursday, the day before her murder came to light. Assistant District Commander Gary Lam said there were bruises all over the victim's body, including some that were believed to have been caused by corrosive liquid. Officers are still trying to determine the motive and cause of her death. Isaac Lee, HKIPC. Hong Kong is on high alert after new subvariants of the Omicron COVID strain were found locally. Chuang Shok Kwan, who heads the Communicable Disease Branch, says 10 samples from recent imported cases carried either the BA.2.12 or the BA.2.12.1 variants. Seven were detected on arrival and three during hotel quarantine. Citing overseas studies, Chuang said the subvariants may be more transmissible, but their mortality rate is similar to that of Omicron. Meanwhile, the city reported 363 COVID infections today, three fewer than yesterday. But the number of imported cases almost doubled to 25. Another 10 people died after contracting the virus. Government vaccine advisor Wallace Lau has warned that the drop in COVID cases might only be temporary. This comes as the second phase of the vaccine pass scheme went into effect. Chloe Fung reports. All Hong Kong adults have to be double jabbed to enter premises, including restaurants and public venues. Under the second phase of the vaccine pass scheme, which took effect today, public reaction was mixed. Some were in favor, saying it will make the city safer. Others complained about the inconvenience and the extra workload for restaurant staff who will have to check the vaccination status of every customer. Community vaccination centers were kept busy. Members of this family accompanied their mother to get her second jab so that they can all dine out together. Those aged between 12 and 17 also need a second shot, six months after their first jab. Vaccine expert Wallace Lau, meanwhile, warned people not to let their guard down just because COVID cases have been declining. This could well be very temporary, okay? So unless we are all well protected by a full vaccination regimen, for most of us at least three injections, for some of the elderly people, for the elderly people and some of the uh, chronically ill or immunocompromised people, they actually require a fourth uh, jab of the vaccine in order to give them the adequate protection. So please, 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 do not be complacent. Do not um, relax. Lao added that Hong Kong should continue to improve its vaccination rate and disclosed that he is working on providing a fifth dose for those who need it. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. 
More than 80,000 employers and self-employed people have submitted bids on the first day of applications for government subsidies. Officials hope that the scheme will help lower the jobless rate. Isaac Lee reports. There has been an enthusiastic response to the employment support scheme, which is aimed at keeping people in jobs during the COVID-induced economic downturn. Companies that qualify can get as much as $8,000 per month for each employee to pay their salaries for the next three months. The government received 49,000 applications from employers on the first day. 80% had benefited from the same scheme two years ago. Around 38,000 self-employed people also applied. Already we've seen some of the uh, actions in the market where people will start to rethink about the continuity of their business and the planning of resuming their business uh, after the relaxation of the social distance measures. So I would say the impacts already have been seen uh, in the past couple of weeks. Law expects the scheme to lower the unemployment rate, which is now at 5%. The fifth COVID wave also placed a heavy burden on the medical system. Outbreaks in more than 90% of the city's care homes led to around 3,400 deaths. Law said it was a tragic experience and revealed that the government is drawing up plans to cope with a potential sixth wave. He said COVID patients should no longer be allowed to quarantine in care homes, even if stringent measures are adopted. Exactly HKIBC. There was some relief for residents of Shanghai after officials declared that the COVID outbreak there is under control. But the Labor Day holiday in Beijing is expected to be bleak as more restrictions are introduced. Chloe Feng has the details. Beijing is ramping up COVID measures during the five-day Labor Day break, which is one of the busiest times for travel on the mainland. Officials poured cold water on holiday expectations by declaring that there is no vacation when it comes to fighting the virus. Starting today, all residents must show a negative PCR test result within 48 hours before entering public venues. Dining in services in restaurants are suspended, while parks and entertainment places have to operate at half capacity. Regular PCR tests will be rolled out after the break ends on Thursday. The capital had a record 67 new COVID infections. All but eight were symptomatic, taking the tally to nearly 300. Shanghai, meanwhile, achieved what officials called social dynamic zero following a month-long lockdown. All its ladies were detected in isolation facilities, indicating that the transmission chain has been broken. Residents hope the breakthrough will lead to a relaxation of restrictions, although officials in the financial center called for patience. Shanghai reported a little over 10,000 new infections, the lowest in 25 days. An additional 47 deaths raised the total to 387. Another 600 infections were reported in other parts of the mainland. Chloe Feng, HKRBC. There are fears that China's slowing economy could have an impact on global growth as supply chains are disrupted. Concerns arose after sharp falls in the mainland's official purchasing manager's indices for April. The manufacturing benchmark dropped two points from March to 47.4, the lowest in more than two years. The services index saw a steeper fall to 41.9. A reading below 50 suggests a contraction. The declines follows COVID outbreaks that hampered factory activity, while lockdowns stopped people from going out to shop. Overseas, the premier of the British Virgin Islands, Andrew Fahey, has been arrested in the U.S. state of Miami for allegedly smuggling cocaine and money laundering. The U.S. Department of Justice accused Fahey of pocketing millions of dollars for facilitating the safe passage of tons of Colombian cocaine into Miami through his island nation. His arrest triggered the early release of a British report alleging widespread abuse in the government of the Caribbean territory, 
which is a popular tax haven. The paper recommended that Britain impose direct rule over the territory. But unless the most urgent and drastic steps are taken, the current situation with elected officials deliberately ignoring the tenets of good government, good governance, will go on indefinitely. What this would mean in real terms is that there would be no more elected representatives who represent the people of the districts and the territory in the House of Assembly, where laws are made for our society. There also would be no government ministers to advance the public priorities or cabinet to approve a policy. All of this authority would be vested in the governor. The report makes a number of recommendations aimed at reforming and strengthening the systems of government in the Virgin Islands. In my view, these can be achieved without the partial or full suspension of the Constitution, in which di direct rule would apply. Moscow has continued its assault across Ukraine as the war entered Day 66. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov blamed Western countries for convincing Ukraine to stall peace talks. Another day, another round of shelling. For residents of Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, this has become standard, but no less terrifying. They are firing at us with everything they've got, said this Ukrainian soldier. They don't care where it goes, and it's impossible to figure out where it will fire. There is nothing here besides residential buildings, schools and kindergartens. There were similar scenes in the city of Festiv in central Ukraine. An industrial area was hit by cruise missiles, damaging buildings and cars and injuring two people. In the port city of Mariupol, Ukrainian soldiers are holding out at the Azovstal steel plant. But the situation is getting more dire each day. Mayor Vadim Boychenko said the troops are running dangerously low on food, water and medicine, and called it hell on earth. President Volodymyr Zelensky admitted that the situation around Kharkiv and Donbass in the east was difficult. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, meanwhile, blamed Ukraine and the West for stalling progress towards peace. We are stuck because of this inconsistency, because of the, their desire to play games every time, and as far as I can guess, because of the instructions they get from Washington, from London, from some other capitals, uh, not to accelerate the negotiating process. Lavrov criticized Ukrainian ultranationals for backtracking on arrangements to open humanitarian corridors. A cat in London has become a TikTok sensation, with up to 4 million views for some videos of her touring the British capital as she sits on her owner's bicycle. I adopted her in Los Angeles and drove her up to San Francisco where I lived at the time and uh, I trained her right from the start to do walks so like right when I got her home I had the harness on her and we were practicing and so I took her on a lot of adventures you know we went to the beach we've ridden the trains around San Francisco I always used to take her down to the store and stuff like that um, so when we finally decided to do the bike rides in London you know it had been four years of walks and adventures and so when I put her on the bike basket she thought nothing of it she was just immediately fine with it. Finally, the weather. It will be significantly cooler tomorrow with clouds and showers. Temperatures will range between 20 and 24 degrees. More of the same on Monday before we get some sun again on Tuesday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. And that's our main news for Saturday night. Join us for more news at 11.30. I'm Wen Wang. Have a good evening.